over here. And we're ready to go. Ready to go. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. to see you, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to get up and around be here. You're looking good. What's that? <laughs> In your chair. <laughs> <laughs> no. We've been sitting here 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I did have my breakfast there. I went by, <laughs> I went by McDonald's, came in here, I turned the top in and I turned on the light, blah, 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 blah. I came in here and sat there and ate my McDonald's and, <laughs> and then I went up. And that's when I unlocked the door and I'll put all the ladies in and he took my chair. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, today we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. We'll be talking about wisdom and folly, which, of course, is what Solomon has been writing about, writing about you know, in the, in the book. We'll start with a word of prayer as usual. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word and for the lessons you teach us. And again, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come guide us in the study of your word. Because obviously, without you, we're not going to understand. So help us, guide us, direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, the first. 10 verses is kind of like Proverbs. He's just giving you these wise sayings, right? A good name is better than a good ointment <laughs> or fine perfume, basically, right? And the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Remember how Solomon was talking about all these different things, and they're all folly. They're all, you know, of meaningless, you know, all these, all the things that mankind tries to accomplish. And in some cases, you know, it, you're better off when you die and the pain's over. <laughs> right? It is better to go to a house of mourning than to a house of feasting. Why would that be? <laughs> you know, if you go to a house of mourning, you might realize, well, maybe I got it better than I thought. <laughs> right? You know, because that is the end of every man, and the living takes it to heart. In other words, if you go to a house of mourning, you realize, well, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> right? Sorrow is better than laughter, for when a face is sad, a heart may be happy. <laughs> I was dashing around this morning and probably didn't have the best of attitudes. <laughs> Trying to get in the car, and I had this thing hooked up, and the cable catches on Lynn's Jeep bumper, and you know, I'm just like, dang, gum it, you know? <laughs> you know? So once I got in the car, I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm on my way to church to worship. I need an attitude adjustment. <laughs> right? You know? And sometimes we just have to face facts and figure out, you know, because we have God, right? And so with the fear of God, everything, everything works out. You know, the people that don't have God, it becomes problematic because you don't have a solution to whatever your real problem is. Right? The mind of the wise is in the house of mourning, while the mind of fools is in the house of pleasure. If you spend all your time pursuing pleasure, right? He's saying that's foolish. Did he do that? 
remember when he was younger and he was all kinds of wise and then as he got older and he started getting all these wives and letting them you know worship other gods and did all kinds of things and then decided I need to pursue wisdom and figure out what's really right and you know and kind of came back to God because we think this was written at the end of his life somewhere around 935 BC right we think Solomon passed away in 931 BC. Right? So he's talking about, you know, how do you live your life? And first, bottom line, if you don't put God first, you got problems. Right? How old was Solomon before he passed? How old were you when he passed? Right. Uh, roughly 60. I don't have an exact. Because as I recall, he was king for 40 years and was a young man when he became king. Right. It is better to listen to rebuke of a wise man than to listen to the song of fools. <laughs> right? We don't really like rebuke, do we? <laughs> but if you're counseling with wise men and they tell you, no, you don't really want to do it that way. <laughs> you know, you really need to adjust some things in your life. We don't like to hear that. But that's a lot better than somebody else over here praising you. I mean, what happened when Solomon died and Rehoboam became king and his young friend said, Dude, you're the king. You can raise taxes. You can do whatever you want. Right? He said, yeah, I'm the king. And what happened? Civil War. The northern ten tribes left him. Right? So he's saying that you got to pay attention to who you're listening to. For as the crackling of thorn bushes under a pot, so is the laughter of a fool. <laughs> yeah, how long does that last? Then this too is futility. For oppression makes a wise man mad, and a bribe corrupts the heart. And we've got a nation full of bribed people today. Yeah. Politicians and judges, etc., some of them are blackmailed, some of them are flat out bribed, you know. And so we've got a big mess that has to be cleaned up. And hopefully they'll be able to do that. <laughs> the end of the matter is better than its beginning. Patience of spirit is better than haughtiness of spirit. <laughs> right? How long is it going to take to get to the end of the matter? Well, we don't know. Patience. <laughs> Right? We need to have patience. God has his timing on things. You know, Larry has his timing too, <laughs> but they never match. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, and we, we don't want to be by, like the guy that says, God, I need patience, I need it now. <laughs> right? You know? Do not be eager in your heart to be angry. For anger resides in the bosom of fools. This one reminds me of a saying I heard years ago, and I don't remember the source, right? But the comment was, you can decipher, you know, measure the size of a man by the size of the thing it takes to make him angry. You know, like catching my cord on the bumper, <laughs> right? If little things affect your attitude and make you angry, then maybe you need an adjustment, <laughs> right? Like Zig Ziglar says, it's time for a checkup from the neck up, <laughs> right? Do not say, why is it that the former days were better than these? <laughs> 
for it is not from wisdom that you ask about this. Mm -hmm. So, when we're in the middle of the situation, we always think it's worse than it is. And when you look back, frequently you don't remember all the problems you had <laughs> back then, right? And so you think, well, it was better back then than it is now. <laughs> I remember my dad telling me when I first moved down here from Omaha, and he's like, I hear people talking about the good old days. He said, heck, these are the good days right now. <laughs> he was making more money and, you know, doing better than he ever had. <laughs> he's like, this is the good days. <laughs> Wisdom, verse 11, along with an inheritance is good. Where does wisdom come from? It's not a trick question. <laughs> From God. I was right? going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wisdom comes from God, and it's the proper application of knowledge. And how do you get knowledge? Through God, I guess. <laughs> well, from hearing, learning, right? I was listening to, this reminds me, uh, Hal Lindsey talking about his, in his uh, study of John right now on his TV program. He's going through John and he's talking about hearing and how important hearing is. You know, you hear something and you want to think about it a while, you frequently say, I'm going to chew on that. Right? Because <laughs> he says, you know, it's like when we eat, we chew, we taste something, then we decipher if it's good or not, right? Well, when you hear, you got to decipher, is this good or not? You know, is it from God or not? What does the, the scripture say about faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God? And how can they hear unless they have a preacher, right? hearing wisdom along with an inheritance is good right is is an inheritance good you inherit some money is that good <laughs> basically of course it depends largely upon what you do with it right but God's wisdom and an inheritance by the way they're both basically unearned <laughs> right and an advantage to those who see the sun. Are you alive? <laughs> Do you see the sun? <laughs> right? For wisdom is protection just as money is protection. If you have this inheritance, if you have money, can you, to a large degree, buy protection? You can build walls around your house. You can, you know, have security guards and da 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 da, right? You know, there's a lot of things you can do. But wisdom is protection, because in the last half of verse 12, but the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the lives of its possessors. If you got money, will it keep you from getting a virus, <laughs> having a stroke or a heart attack? Then being in a plane crash, right? You know, there's things that money can't prohibit. Right. Whereas wisdom preserves the lives of its possessors, right? You know, and with wisdom, remember the phrase, if I give a man a fish, I feed him for a day. But if I teach a man to fish, I feed him for life, right? right? giving wisdom <laughs> okay verse 13 consider the work of God what has God done for who is able to straighten what he has bent <laughs> who can undo what God's done what has God done He created the heavens and the earth, right? And I always like to add by speaking. 
<laughs> right? Made something out of nothing. Well, you, you've heard that on shows, uh, one of those uh, scientists or something, God, you know, we don't need to you know, And uh, God said, oh, really? And he, the scientist said, yeah, we can embryos and we can do it. And he said, oh, really? And he said, you want a contest? And uh, they said, yeah, we'll, we'll just make it a, a human. And uh, the scientist started to pick up some dirt in it, and God said, stop. <laughs> Go get your own get dirt. Your own dirt. <laughs> 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 yeah, I made the dirt. <laughs> and everything else, right? You know. But God also, you remember the Red Sea party? What happened when it was undone? <laughs> it killed a lot of people. The Egyptian army drowned, right? Yeah. You know, they couldn't hold back the water, could they? Right? Has God provided a means of salvation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. came suffered, died on the cross, paid the price for our sins, rose again on the third day, right? And by accepting his infinite sacrifice, just accepting it, you have salvation. Can anybody undo that? No. Done deal, right? You can't undo what God's done. <laughs> Okay. Now people have their perceptions of what God's done. Sometimes they get, you know, um, false ideas and give God credit for things God didn't do. <laughs> Satan might have done it. Maybe they did it themselves. <laughs> right? An example is if you sin and then pay the consequences, whose fault is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Now, somebody else can sin, can cross the median and smack you, you know, and tear you up in your car and whatnot. Wasn't your fault. Bad things happen to good people because we live in a fallen, sinful world. Right? But then people will say, well, God did that. No, no, man did that. Now, did God know it was going to happen? Sure. He lives in all time simultaneously, right? So he's looking out for us and, and knows when our time is and gives us our opportunities, especially for salvation. And my attitude simply is whenever it's time, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm a Christian, right? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. If he wants to take me this afternoon or in my next breath, right? Fine with me. <laughs> I know where I'm going. What a pleasure. What peace of mind, you know, that is. Because we have, in spite of our own sinful nature, right? We have peace with God. Without Jesus, you can't have peace with God. You're at war with God. You're running from God. You know? Okay. Verse 14. In the day of prosperity, or, you know, any kind of financial or otherwise, you know, anything good. In the day of prosperity, be happy. <laughs> right? But in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other so that man may not discover anything that will be after him. Who knows the future? Only God. 
and he doesn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked him many, many times. <laughs> right? Don't you love those uh, prognosticators, those uh, the guys that predict the future, you know, such and such is going to die, this is going to happen, da 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 da. But they can't ever predict the lottery. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I mean, if they were so good at that, <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you know who was going to win all the ball games? And you could go make your wagers. You could, <laughs> you know, Sports go to Vegas and walk out with a trillion dollars. You know, <laughs> you could own Vegas. You could win everything. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know the future. Matter of fact, it's interesting that I don't. Oh gosh, uh, I think it was D. James Kennedy was talking about those people, and somebody did a study and found out that law of averages did better than they did. <laughs> 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 they were worse than just anybody picking just the average. What, what would happen in law of averages anyway? But God knows the future, right? <clears throat> and if we rely on God's wisdom, godly wisdom, in our lives. It makes a framework for us to live a meaningful life. If we're allowing the Holy Spirit to live through us, God through us, and so we're doing the things that God is asking us to do. And not the things that Larry wants to do. <laughs> you know, Larry gets in the way all the time. Because Larry's got things he wants to do. Right? But is that the thing that God wants to do? I think they're frequently at odds. <laughs> but Larry's pretty selfish when you get down to it. <laughs> right? You know? And that's what he's saying. that If we're doing that, We've got a much better life. We have this framework, right? And doing what God wants us to do puts us in a better position for the future that we don't know what it is, right? Doing what we want to do diminishes our position for whatever is in the future. So that a man may not discover whatever is after him. Right. Verse 15, I have seen everything during my lifetime of futility. <laughs> right? I mean, he's the richest man in the world. He's got everything you could possibly imagine at 935 B.C., right? And he's looking at and studying all the different people and the lifestyles and what happens and whatnot. And it's just, so much of it is just meaningless. Men strive like, uh, we're going to be, I think we'll be reading a little bit about people become workaholics, right? At the expense of not only their relationship with God, their relationship with their family. And then there's the opposite. The people that don't work, <laughs> right? At the expense <laughs> of their relationships, you know? And there's people that, I mean, you can, you can take everything to extreme. There's people that take their Christianity to the extreme. And all they do is talk about Jesus all the time. Right? Mm -hmm. To the hindrance of their performance at work. Right? You can go overboard in any direction. I mean, it's obviously, we are told to tell people about Jesus, right? But do it when the Spirit leads you to do it, and not just blurting it out all the time, because now, you know, you're actually pushing people away. They don't want to hear from you, right? Until something really bad happens in their life, and they're like, I need something. Maybe that Jesus freak over there has got something, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway. I've seen everything, right? In my lifetime of futility, there is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, right? And there's a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. How's that? What? The wicked live a long life? 
-hmm. Didn't Deuteronomy tell us that, you know, choose today who you will serve, right? Serve God and live long in your country as they were crossing into the promised land. I think it's in chapter 28. And they take that to the extreme, meaning every individual life, if you serve God, you'll live long. Is that what God said? No. He's saying you as a nation, you, this group of people, if you serve me, right, you live in your land in peace and prosperity, etc. But if you as a nation turn from me, what happens? He allows other countries to invade. I mean, they just, right after that, they had the 400 years of judges and what happened every other generation. Somebody invaded. And then he'd have to raise up a judge and they'd push him out. And they'd have one generation of peace and they'd fall back from God and the other invasion. You know, the Moabites, the Philistines, everybody around him kept coming in, <laughs> right? For 400 years. <laughs> And then they did wrong because they wanted a king. And then they said, yeah. But 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 they have a king, and Freddie has a king, and Frankie over here has a king. We need a king. <laughs> and Samuel said, they're rejecting me. And God said, no, they're not. They're rejecting me. So we'll give him a king, and here's what he's going to do. He's going to attack the heck out of you. <laughs> right? He's going to make you servants. You know, da 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 da. And they're like, we need a king, we need a king. <laughs> and that's what they got. And even Solomon taxed the heck out of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we're still getting taxed. <laughs> right? Okay? But that happens in life. Good things happen to bad people, and bad things happen to good people. Do not be excessively righteous and do not be overly wise. Why should you ruin yourself? You know, what happened to them then? They all they got into the legalism. You can only walk so far. You can only do this. You can only do that, right? You know, and Jesus had to come along and say, no, you don't get it. Man wasn't created for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was created for man. <laughs> you know? And so he turns it around. Do not be excessively wicked. <laughs> and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? You know, do foolish people usually die early? Drug addicts, alcoholism, you name it. Right? Foolish people take too many risks, you know. That's the way of the deal, you might say, right? And if you're foolish, you're probably committing more sins than the righteous. Mm -hmm. And consequences of sins might be everything from jail, <laughs> capital punishment, right? All kinds of things that come as a result of that. Right? It is good that you grasp one thing and also not let go of the other for the one who fears God comes forth with both of them. So what is our main purpose in life? To fear God. Right? And what does fear God mean? Because, you know, we in English, 20th and 21st century English, when you, we talk about fear, we're like, ho, oh, oh, oh. ho, uh ho. -huh. Is that what this word means? No. It means reverence. Okay. Reverence, respect, right? I'll ask the guy who said it, it's like me knocking respect. Because when you actually put in perspective who God is, <laughs> and you're approaching him, if your knees aren't knocking, something's not quite right. <laughs> right. But respect and awe of God and what he's done for us, absolutely mind-boggling. 
right? And so this is what life is about, living to please God. Who created you? God. Yeah, and who's provided salvation for you? Who's preparing an eternal home for you? God. Yeah, and Larry likes to do things his way. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Wisdom strengthens a wise man more than ten rulers who are in a city. They used to have a belief that, you know, ten people ruling a city was better than one. And so, remember, the, they talk about the elders in the city that would be at the city gate. You know, they would meet at the gate and discuss the issues of the city and whatnot. And so, he's, so he's talking about these kinds of people, right? So wisdom is better than even ten advisors. <laughs> Remember, wisdom comes from... <laughs> from God. You know, advice from... Ten men may not come from God, <laughs> right? How often do ten men get together and make a wrong decision? Or nine of them on the Supreme Court who say, oh, yeah, it's perfectly fine to kill babies. As many as you want. No problem. That's the kind of wisdom you can get from men. <laughs> right? Verse 20, indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. What's Romans 3.23 uh, say? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? There's, no, there's nobody who does good all the time, doesn't sin. And God agreed. <laughs> right? There isn't anybody. But that's, and that's why Jesus had to come <laughs> to pay that price for our sin because we're all sinners. All of us. And the wages of sin is Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death. death. Spiritual death. Sometimes physical death too, but spiritual death. Eternal separation from the Most Holy God. Romans 5 8. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not after we turn things around, right? While we were sinners, while we were enemies of God. Christ. Oh, there I'm back. At least on my screen. <laughs> I just saw all kinds of lines and <laughs> don't know what it's doing. Verse 21. Also, do not take seriously all words which are spoken, lest you hear your servant cursing you. <laughs> Have you ever said something you wish you hadn't said? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've all done it, you know. And if somebody is saying something about us, does it mean a great deal? Right? Don't take seriously. Now, should we consider what somebody else says about us? Potentially. Maybe there is something we need to know, like we talk too much. <laughs> Right? I'm going to go with the best one. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, we don't want to overdo it when we hear something that somebody else says. But pay attention. And again, hearing, chew on it, right? <laughs> is this something, pray about it? Is this something that I need to do something about? Right? For you also have realized that you likewise have many times cursed others. 
like the guy that pulls out in front of you and then doesn't speed up and go slow. <laughs> I don't mind it so much if they pull out and get on down the road, <laughs> right? So they pull out and they make me have to hit the brakes. <laughs> like, well, come on. <laughs> he goes and rings the bell. I can't even see on my phone what time it is. I can tell them. You don't talk very loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we haven't had a good bell ringer in a while. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm going to jump to the end of chapter 7. And in verse 29, it says, Behold, I have found only this, that God made men upright, but they have sought out many devices. Right? When God made Adam, he was pure, right? But then he decided to sin. And unfortunately, he passed that little trait down to all of us. <laughs> right? We all have our selfish desires where we think we know best. <laughs> Or I can slide in this thing over here because this is what Larry wants to do, <laughs> right? Whether it's what God wants or not, men have sought out many other devices. So the lesson is there's God's wisdom and us, if we obey God and let the Spirit lead us, to do righteous things, right? Versus the things, these other devices, these foolish things. <laughs> if it's not godly, it's foolish. <laughs> it's kind of simple. But Father in heaven, as always, we thank you for your word, for bringing us to your house here today, for uh, allowing us to learn a little bit more about how we should live our lives in wisdom, in connection with you, with our respect, with our fear of you that we should have. Thank you for the way you take care of us. But Lord, especially, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that you came to earth as a man. As unbelievable as that sounds, God became a man, suffered and died on a cross for us, that we can be back with you, that our sin problem is resolved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And in his name, we pray. Amen. Well, that's our lesson in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. <laughs>